You have walked the wilds of Kapahadal through care and spiteful backlands all the way into Mampan. You have survived traps, thieves, serpents and vengeful gods. And now it is here, the crown of kings. It is said the crown was never forged, only found by Kalana the reformer, a lowly foot soldier who became emperor of the eastern world. Such is the power of the crown. The air around it crackles with influence. I'll take it. Your destiny awaits. With the crown in your hands you will be as powerful as Kalana. The goblins are arming, the giants are waking, and the birdmen carving cruel daggers from stone. War will come. But you will prevent it. But then, the image of the crown begins to flicker. You rush forward. It's a trap! And startle yourself awake. You're alone, exhausted, in a little hut in the outpost settlement. Your unimaginable journey is not even a single step begun. Eagle presents Steve Jackson's Sorcery Part One The Shamutanti Hills. It is sunrise. You dress breakfast on bread and goat's milk and collect the pack and sword from beside your bed. Before you leave, you close your eyes and raise a prayer to your spirit's guide. This morning it has the form of a panther, but what will it become once your journey truly begins? A great calm descends on you. Outside the hut, you hear the outpost settlement stirring into life. Time then to depart. You lift back up the flap of the hut and step into the early morning sunshine. Eyes follow you as you leave the hut and walk towards the grey Shamutanti wall. The frontiers people of this tiny settlement are well aware of your mission. You turn to them and bow. Some smile and reply, but are too afraid to approach. Others make gestures of protection. You are going beyond the wall, so they believe you are to be cursed. A man is waiting on the path of the Kantopani gate, the final doorway between Analand and the wilds of Karpadad. You recognize the sergeant of the Sightmaster Warriors. He holds out his hands. He touches his forehand with two fingers. You are almost ready, he says. I have for you a gift from the king, 24 gold pieces. It is all we can spare this time. He holds out a pouch. You accept the gift graciously. Thank you. You should buy some supplies before you pass the wall, the sergeant says. And you must collect your spellbook if you wish magic to aid you. Finally, should you wish to practice your sword play, I will go one last round with you. And he points with his staff towards the training ground. One of the huts, set slightly back from the others, is decorated with glyphs and strange symbols. A terrible smell emanates from this doorway. It is the hut of the chief mage. He has been preparing a spellbook for days, reading star charts to work out which spells will, will be available to you in different locations in the hills and beyond. You lift the flap and go inside. The mage looks up at you with haggard, sleepless eyes and presses the book into your hands. 
Do you understand how to use this? He asks. Yes. The mage nods. Good. He scratches absently at his hair. Remember, some spells will cause you ever to use, but the ones that don't will not work without a focus. An item of some kind. You will need to read the book to know that. Small traders in the settlement supply the Sightmaster warriors with weapons, armor, food and clothing. You go over with the sergeant to a stall selling flatbreads and cheese. Two gold pieces per ration, the owner says. You hand over your coins and the man places two rations carefully into your pack. You must be sure you eat every day or you will suffer. The sergeant tells you, standing at his side. Eating more will give you extra strength, but it is not necessary. You walk with the sergeant to the training ground, and he wraps the base of his staff in leather. To begin, the sergeant says. We will practice the stances first. Defend yourself against me. Sightmaster is a powerful enemy. By defending, you will receive the minimum damage from any attacks he makes. The, the Sightmaster sergeant defends himself as well. The round is a stalemate. I will now defend myself, he says. Whatever attack you play... <laughs> But a strong attack will use up more power. You should choose a weak attack. You swing with a weak attack, rushing for the Sightmaster Sergeant who is defending. My next attack will be weak. You will be able to overpower me by playing a stronger attack. But be sure your attack is stronger. You defend yourself, but the Sightmaster Sergeant performs a weak attack. You receive a small amount of damage, but he will be stronger now, so his next attack may be more powerful. My next attack will be one of my strongest. If you perform a full attack, you overpower me, but otherwise, you had best defend yourself. You play a strong attack, overpowering the Sightmaster Sergeant. He bows. You have finished me. Excellent. <laughs> you seem to remember the basics. Good. Another round? You shake your head. Very good. But if you wish a bow in earnest, then I want you. I will not go easy on you. He indicates the wider yard where there is space for a true match. You head over to the yard to practice a bout of real fighting. The sergeant removes the cloth padding from the base of his staff. This time I will not tell you my intentions. You will have to read them for yourself. Be ready! The Sightmaster bows to you, tap the ground with his long staff and readies his stance. You rush him quickly, conserving your energy while delivering a great power behind your blade. The Sightmaster Sergeant comes in with a tough blow, balancing his strength and his impact, but he has misjudged your strength and you knock him back. You have hurt him. You are strong, he acknowledges. You see his arm grow tense, he is readying from a strong attack. Relentlessly, you cut and thrust, keeping him pinned. You rush toward with a deep, heavy slash, catching him with his arms raised, like he was an infant le learning to fight for the first time. His breath begins to heave, he's struggling to stay upright. You 
You drop yourself in a crouch as he tries to a deep bash, but you duck. Fast work! He grunts. You escape, mostly uninjured. He shifts his grip to hold his staff more loosely. He seemed to be preparing for a, for a simple jab. A chance to overpower him, perhaps? Time to attack! You swing your sword fast in toward his chest. It is enough to finish him. The side master throws down his staff. You have me! He declares with a grin. The sergeant is gasping for a breath. He bows to you once more. Excellent! He declares. Few men have ever bested me. You truly are Analan's best hope. As he talks, a nearby healer hurries over with a salve and your health and the sergeant is quickly restored. You reach the foot of the mighty gate. It is sealed. The sergeant places one hand on the wood. The gate has been locked from some time to deter raiders, he tells you. But you will have no difficulty. The stair of this place allows the dop spell to be crafted. And he stands back. Stop! You weave the spell. One by one, the great tumblers of the door begins to crack and groan. The hinges turn with a noise like hail on a canvas roof. These gates have not been opened since our last champion was lost, the sergeant says. I wish you more luck than he. Perhaps even you will meet him on your great travels. I am sure he's dead. The side master nods, peering at something in the horizon. I believe he is returning, but transformed. I hope you do not meet the same fate. He stands back from you. Together, you step into the shadows of the wall. One last word. When you have the crown, find the highest point you can find. We will be watching. I understand. I will not wish you a safe journey to care. For the way ahead will not be safe, the sergeant murmurs as he peers into the distance through the open gates. The sidemaster warriors are selected from birth from their incredible powers of telescopic vision. You cannot help but wonder how far he can see. Tell me what lies ahead. This path leads first to Kantupani, a settlement of traders. Though most are rogues and thieves. You should be there before the sun has reached its peak. From there, three routes lead on to Quisantanti, but no single route is safe. Kakabad is a land of the devils. Enough talking, it is time to go. Striding away, you pass through the gate. The faces of the folk watching your departure reveal the hopes that rest on you and your quest. The early morning air is crisp and the rising sun paints the slopes in shades of peaceful beauty, concealing the evil that lies ahead. The path winds through slopes of wild scrubland. The countryside is deserted and the airy silence is broken only by the cawing of the occasional crow. There is a spell for hearing that they say, but you do not have the equipment it requires. The birds appear to pause in the air to examine you as they pass. Stupid creatures that pose no threat, so you ignore them. <laughs> 